Here we have been given a sequence that is convergent. Okay, remember what convergent means? It means that it eventually stops growing. Now we said that a, converge, a series can only converge if it is geometric and the numbers need to be to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So we said that the ratio has to be some number between minus one and it must be less than one. But let's forget about all the maths for now and let's just think about this logically. If x is six, no, let's say 70 for example, then your sequence would look like this. Your first term would be 100 and your second term would be 70 plus 40, which is 110. So to get from 100 to 110, you would have to multiply by 1.1. And then if it's a converge, I mean, if it's a geometric, you would have to keep multiplying by 1.1. And so your numbers would get bigger and bigger and bigger. That would not be convergent. Let's say x was 30. Then your sequence would have the number 100, and then 30 plus 40 is 70. Aha, so now to get from 100 to 70, you multiply. Remember, it's all about what do you have to multiply with? Well, you're going to multiply with 0 0.7. How do I work that out? I say the second number divided by the first number. Okay, so if you had to multiply by 0 0.7 the whole time, to get to your next numbers, you would find that the numbers are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. That is convergent. So we can see that the R value here is 0 0.7. Let's say that X was minus 50. Well, then you would have 100 as your first term. Your second term would be minus 50 plus 40, which would be minus 10. Now, how do you get from 100 to 10. Well, don't worry about the minus. Just to get to 10, you'd have to divide by 10, which is the same as multiplying by 1 over 10. How did I get that? I said 10 divided by 100. Okay, but because of the negative, it means our ratio is going to be negative 1 over 10. So to get to term 3, you would have to take minus 10 and times it with negative 1 over 10, and that would give us 1. Then you would multiply that by negative 1 over 10, and that would give us negative 1 over 10. And as you carry on, you would find that your numbers are getting smaller and smaller. So here your ratio is a negative number, but that is okay. The maths tells us that as long as your ratio is any number between minus 1 and 1, then it will converge. So examples of numbers like that would be minus a half, 0, 0,4 for example, oh, no, let's do a semicolon there, so 0, 0, 0,4 would work, negative 0, 0,8. So we're looking for any number, any ratio number that is between minus 1 and 1. So it doesn't matter if it's a negative as long as it's between 1 and minus 1. So we found that when x was equal to 30, everything was fine. We said that when x was minus 50, everything was fine. When x was 70, then things weren't fine because then your ratio number became too big. So how are we going to find all of the possible numbers? Well, we want the ratio to be between minus 1 and 1. How do you work out the ratio of this? Well, if I gave you a sequence that went 2, 4, 8, 16, your ratio is 2 because it's 4 divided by 2. Or you could say 16 divided by 8 or 8 divided by 4. As long as you choose any number on the right divided by the number to the left of it. That is how you work out the ratio. So in this case, it's going to be x plus 40 over 100. There we go. Now you can just solve that. So we times the 100 on the left side and on the right side. So we end up with negative 100 smaller than x plus 40 smaller than 100. Now if we just move the 40 to the left and to the, sorry, to the right and to the left, then we're going to end up with x being bigger than minus 140 and smaller than 60. So look what this says. It says that for the ratio to be between minus 1 and 1, x has to be any number in between minus 140 and 60. And that's what we found. We found that when x was 30, the ratio was less than 1 and bigger than minus 1. And when x was a minus 50, it was also true. But as soon as x became 70, then it, the ratio became more than 1. And so for number 1, determine the range of numbers that x can be. Here it is. x can be any number that is between minus 140 and 60. Number 2 says, if x is 50, 
determine the sum to infinity. Well, if x is 50, then your first term is 100, and your second term would be 50 plus 40, which is 90. Now, the sum to infinity formula can only be used on a convergent sequence, but we know that it's convergent because we just found the we we found the x values that would make it convergent, and that's between minus 140 and 60. So if x is 50, which is in between those two numbers, then it's going to be convergent. So we are allowed to use the sum to infinity formula, which we saw in the previous video goes like that. And so a is just going to be term 1, which is 100, over 1 minus. Now r is your ratio. So the ratio here is going to be 90 over 100, which is 0, 0,9. And that's going to give us a thousand. So the sum to infinity is a thousand. What that means is that this sequence, because it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, if you add up all the terms, it'll never go more. It'll never go past a thousand. Because remember what happens? Eventually, these term numbers are going to become so small, and eventually they will get to zero. At that point, the sum will stay constant, and that number is going to be a thousand.